Good evening. I would like to call to order the Kaiser City Council in regular session. It's Monday, November 20th, 2017, and ask our city recorder to please call roll. Councilor Ryan? Here. Councilor Freeman? Here. Councilor Reed? Here. Mayor Clark? Here. Council President Parsons? Here. Councilor Herrera? Here. Councilor Anderson? Here. And Youth Councilor Hernandez? Here. Thank you very much. Let's rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag of the United, United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So tonight I want to start off with a special order of business, and that is a proclamation for Small Business Saturday. So um, thank goodness uh, the executive director of the Kaiser Chamber of Commerce is here. So after I read the proclamation, I'll have the opportunity to present it to her as a representative of the business community in the city of Kaiser. So we're glad to have you here with us tonight, Danielle. Whereas the city of Kaiser, Oregon recognizes and celebrates our, small, our local small businesses and the contributions they make to our local economy and community, and whereas, according to the United States Small Business Administration, there are currently 28.8 million small businesses in the United States, and they represent 99.7% of all businesses with employees in the United States, and are responsible for 63% of net new jobs created over the last 20 years, and whereas small businesses employ 48% of the employees in the private sector in the United States, and whereas more than 112 million consumers shopped at small businesses on Small Business Saturday in 2016, and 76% of consumers plan to go to one or more small businesses as part of their 2017 holiday shopping, and whereas consumers aware of Small Business Saturday 2016 spent a total of $15.4 billion with independent merchants on Small Business Saturday and on average 33% of consumers' 2017 holiday shopping will be done at the small, independently owned retailers and restaurants. So now, therefore, be it proclaimed by me, Mayor Kathy Clark of Kaiser, Oregon, with the concurrence of the Kaiser City Council assembled in regular session that Saturday, November 25, 2017, is Small Business Saturday. We urge the residents of our community and communities across our country to support small businesses and merchants on Small Business Saturday and throughout the year. In witness whereof, I have hereunto set my hand and caused the seal of the City of Kaiser, Oregon to be affixed to this document this 20th day of November, 2017. Danielle? I've already seen a lot of crowds at our small businesses. I think people got an early start. Uh, that takes us now to committee reports, and uh, we have Kyle Duran with us tonight to give us an update on the Planning Commission. Good evening. I am here to uh, give a report. I guess, do I need to give my name? Yeah, name and city of residence. Yeah. Yes. Kyle Duran. Uh, Kaiser, City of Kaiser. Thank you. Uh, I'm on the Planning Commission. I'm here to give a report based on uh, our meeting last week uh, about the uh, um, movie theater. Um, I can't even remember what I... <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, about the public hearing on the development standards alternative. Um, and I'm just here to report that we um, moved to, to approve the staff recommendation on the um, uh, alternative for the um, uh, design alternative. Design alternative for the drawn a blank. Um, 
So was this the, the one that had to do with um, how we were going to take care of the, the site the, plan and moving the, into one the building? The landscaping? No. Um, no, this was... Uh, oh, the landscaping. Let me help you out here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, this, our design standards require that there be 50% glazing the windows. on the yes. windows into a building. And it's kind of hard to have a movie theater with lots of windows in it. So um, the design alternative was through the use of landscape materials. And um, so the approval from the Planning Commission was for uh, a significant uh, increase in the size and the uh, design of the landscape. Gotcha. So it's, it's going to be more than just a couple of trees and some lovely little shrubs. It's, there's going to be a number of larger caliper, larger size trees, and um, they're going to relate to the building. So there's going to be a lot of differentiation. Um, so I don't believe that anybody will really notice that there's not a lot of glazing. Yes. So the, with the Planning Commission, we agreed with, with Nate's um, recommendation based on uh, the architect uh, agreeing that they would be happy to, to meet with, uh, with Nate and uh, follow his directions on this. And another interesting thing, they're proposing actually incorporating a mural as part of the facade of the building. Really? So that will go through the Public Art Commission um, and they're going to propose, an, their, their current proposal is for an image of a train, a steam locomotive, in keeping with Kaiser Station. Um, so I think, it, I think it has a lot of fun potential. I agree, that is fabulous. And that's all I had to say. Thanks, Nate. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to express my appreciation to you and the commission. It's a lot of detail work, and I always appreciate the time you put into it. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Duran? All right, thank you very much. Have a happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. That takes us now into public testimony. This time is provided for citizens to address the council on any matters other than those on the agenda scheduled for public hearing. We have no public hearings scheduled tonight. So tonight we get to start off with Paula Giles from the Kaiser Community Library. It's good to see you. Hi. Again, I'm Paula Giles and I'm the president of the Kaiser Community Library Board. And I'm here tonight. You guys have been so wonderful in, in your support of our library. The community part of our library is what we're mostly concerned about. And because of your help with our lease especially, it's allowed us to do so much more activity-wise for our people in this area. We've gotten so many compliments about some of the things we've added. But the biggest thing we just did in October, of course, was our book sale. Your staff here in the building are wonderful. They go out of their way to help us and guide us and help. Believe me, the first time I did this, it was like leading the blind down the alley. I mean, I had no idea what I was doing. And they led me through it and helped me so much. And they continue to support and provide for us all the, all the information we need. By allowing us to have our book sale here in this wonderful building, uh, we were able to raise $1,950. Oh, wow. And because of your support with our lease, we can take that money and we can do some things for our community. A couple of the things that we're doing is expanding our large print library section for our older folks. We've had a lot of people move into the area who have difficulty reading small print. So that has become a real important resource for a lot of folks. A lot of people who, are, who don't get out much they really depend on the library for that kind of uh, input and entertainment for themselves. Television is fine, but, the, but reading you can really get into. Also, we continue to expand the activities and uh, opportunities we have for children especially. Many, uh, we have activities and reading groups for every age group available. We also provide um, activities during the holidays like Halloween and Christmas and different things like that. But we also have lectures and, and authors that live in the area come and share their information with us, and that's important. And all of that is because you folks have been so helpful and supportive of us. When we did it this year, we did it in the rooms opposite the, lo the lobby, which is different. But we got a lot of compliments about it because there was more space 
it was better organized because we had more space. And the people who were here, the, the folks that were renting your other rooms, they came up and thanked us actually, and I'm, I wanna pass that on to your folks here at the building, because they could have their staff meetings in the lobby, whereas before when we were out there with our book sale, they had to go somewhere else on a corner, I suppose, I don't really know. But they were comfortable, they were happy, they came to us and said, oh, this has been so great. So it was kind of a win-win for everybody. The long and the short of it is, you have been so wonderful and supportive. One of the things that you helped us get started was the sponsorship program, and that has been wonderful. To this point, we've helped approximately 20 families who could not otherwise afford a library card to get a library card. And that's because of the suggestions and help from members of your group. So, I mean, in every which way, you've been so wonderful. And I just wanted to come personally and thank you on behalf of all of us at the library. We still are all volunteer. And we're always looking, so if any of you are interested, <laughs> we'd love to have you on board. But do come by and visit because we do have a lot to offer. Oh, one other thing, we've also expanded our uh, English as Second Language section. We are uh, getting both Russian and Spanish books. Again, with some of the funds that come from things like our book sale, because we don't have to worry about the building itself. We can, we can afford to do those kinds of things. So I, again, I'm gonna say it one more time. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all the help that you've given us. We really do appreciate it. Were there any questions that you might have? Are there any questions for Paula? Um, and I believe the uh, sponsorship was Council Ryan's idea, and did some fundraising for that. So very appreciative of the work that she did to make sure there's this money for families to be able to get their memberships there. Um, and I want to express my thanks to you, your board, and all of your volunteers because literacy is the key to education in the future. And what you, the investment that we're making here is going to pay off dividends for years and years to come. So thank you for your dedication and making sure that we have uh, first class opportunities for people in our community to enjoy wonderful literature. And you are right. Reading is the, is the key to knowledge. And travel throughout the world for our children and they come in all the time so excited and I didn't know whether I should mention anyone in particular because I don't want to embarrass anybody. <laughs> That's okay, I help will. help with the sponsorship program <laughs> so much. We've, had, we've actually had parents cry when they were so thrilled that their children could actually take home a book because for them that's a real treasure. And boy, oh boy, they, they take full advantage of it. So again, thank you all very, very much. Well, we are thankful for you, and this is a week of Thanksgiving, yes. so uh, keep up the great work, and we look forward to hearing more in the spring with the spring book sale that comes up, I believe, Iris Festival weekend? Yes, Iris oh. Festival weekend. That's that Friday and Saturday. We are going to be here again, uh, providing you'll allow us to do so. <laughs> no problem with that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks right. again. Thank you, And Paula. happy Thanksgiving to all of you. Thank you. And uh, we have with us tonight uh, Colleen Bush with the Board of Directors for the uh, Salem Kaiser uh, Transit. So glad you see you tonight, Colleen. Thanks Hello. for joining us. Going to talk to us about the update on the House Bill 2017 in regards to chariots. Good evening. Happy November. Um, yes, I'm here. <coughs> There's a couple of things going along with um, House Bill 2017 that chariots is part of, and one is a survey that it's it's out on the website chariots.org. You can pick it up and dr at the customer service desk or ride the bus and put it in the bus envelope there. What it's doing is asking, um, the, Oregon, the Oregon legislature recently passed a bill that secures increased future funding for chariots. We are preparing to enhance our services and we want your feedback on what would work best for you. So we're considering, considering adding service on Saturdays, Sundays, or weekday evenings or a combination. Please help us and decide how we should prioritize service by ranking the three options. So you can take a paper survey or you can take an online survey and it um, needs to be done by Friday, November 24th. I only have two copies, but I'm sure if somebody wants to make copies, they can do that from there. And then along with that, um, the rulemaking advisory committee has been working on the details of House Bill 2017 as, we, as this is going on at the same time. And there's another survey that the public can be par participate in. And I'll read the letter here. Um, dear colleagues, Section 122 of House Bill 2017, Keep Oregon Moving, provides a new dedicated source of state funding 
to expand public transportation services in Oregon. Known as the Statewide Transportation Improvement Fund, STIF, the, legis the legislation will fund four new programs with different eligibility requirements. The Oregon Department of Transportation is conducting a public process to develop administrative rules to guide implementation of the STIF funding programs. ODOT is accepting comments on draft general and formula rules. As rules advisory committee members, in which I, I participated only in that I observed at the meeting on Tuesday and one earlier, the next, there's another one in December. Um, all comments are welcome on any section of the draft rules. ODOT also has a survey running from November 7th at the uh, website www.surveygizmo.com backslash S3 backslash 3966574 backslash STIF draft rules. The survey is the draft general and formula fund rules including sections that use of statewide and transportation improvement fund, stiff formula plan and requirements, advisory committee requirements, and qualified entities distribution of formula program monies. There's a lot of details to work out for the whole state of which chariots will be benefited there. And uh, on a side note, the um, Salem City Club on December, I don't remember the date, they're gonna talk about the transportation fund, what's it, what's it mean for Oregon? And our general manager, Alan Pollock, will be speaking in regards to that. And if, when I can find the date, I'll wave it at you or something. It's in the next couple of weeks, first part of December. And I think that's it. And if I remember correctly, you have the links to these surveys on your Facebook page. Yes. So your Facebook page is titled? Oh, my personal one? No, your, your uh, chariots one. I think it's just chariots. I just go to it. I don't remember what but it said. I think said. you shared onto your uh, director page. Okay, I'll well. do that. So, yeah, I, I have shared I, all those on my director's pages. Mm -hmm. So I'd encourage anybody, um, everybody to go to Colleen's uh, director page and follow on that. Colleen's really good about keeping us updated about what's going on both locally and on the state level. This has been super helpful as we're navigating into new uh, space with uh, House Bill 2017, the transportation package. It's really going to provide some much needed funds for uh, all the modes. So uh, I'm working uh, with these funds and some of the recommendations through SCATS, the Salem Kaiser Area Transportation Study, the MPO. And all of us are looking at the dollars coming in, how can we best utilize them to provide for all of the modes. So thank you for the, your hard work on this, really appreciate okay. it. Are there any questions for uh, Colleen Bush? And just so, so people know, we have two representatives from Kaiser on the Salem Kaiser Transport Salem Kaiser Transit District. I was going transportation study again. Um, Colleen Bush and Kathy Lincoln both represent Kaiser. Yep. All right. Thank you so much for coming tonight. We You're really welcome. appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, Colleen Bush. I live in Kaiser. Yeah. <laughs> and happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Mr. Christmas. Hi there. <laughs> so Dave Wallery and Danielle Bethel are going to talk to us um, from the Kaiser Chamber of Commerce about the Holiday Lights Parade. And just uh, council, so you know, we'll be going from this, uh, unless there's somebody else who wants to address the council, into administrative action on the, uh, uh, on the parades, on the parade. So take it away. You're, gonna, you're not going to do the talking? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm Danielle Bethel, the director of the Kaiser Chamber, and I'm a Kaiser resident. This is Dave Wallery, Wallery's Pizza of West Salem, and he is a Kaiser resident. And we are here to talk about the myriad of holiday events that the Kaiser Chamber partners with the city of Kaiser on each year. Um, and it looks like the first one is our request to suspend the temporary, excuse me, temporary suspend the ordinance of the street vendor rule. And so, I guess, Nate, I don't know what I'm supposed to do other than say, will you please suspend that for a bit so we can have the parade? <laughs> and bring in um, street vendors along the way last year. I'm sure you may recall that uh, we took the parade over. It had uh, retired in 2015. And then late in the year, I basically begged and pleaded with our board to... Um, take it on and we put it together pretty quickly and we wanted to incorporate some businesses on River Road so folks had more access to um, different vendors, not just the restaurants, maybe bring those restaurants outside or have different programs and clubs in the city really get involved. 
Last year we had, I think, five, but I don't remember off the top of my head, um, vendors along River Road that did cocoa and tacos and different things. This year um, we have heard from six different vendors. Well, I'm at Valley Bank. Um, Yenny and Schofield was a new orthodontist here in town. Uh, McNary Fine Arts. Uh, Lake Point Community Church is going to host a cocoa booth at Remodeling by Classic Homes, which in their new location on River Road. Uh, Fran's Bakery of Portland is going to come down and um, <clears throat> serve grilled cheese bites at JC's Pizzeria parking lot for all, all the all free too. All, all actually all of this for the most part is free, all free. except for the soup at right. McNary Fine Arts. Um, and then El Patron Mexican Grill is going to be outside doing Mexican cocoa and tacos and quesadillas. Um, so we, it's just six, but we're starting to gain more traction. Um, I think as the parade goes on year to year, we'll get more folks, more businesses involved. Um, it's nice that actually all of those individuals are Kaiser businesses. And it just occurred to me that I left one off. Sorry, Shannon. <laughs> St. Edward's Catholic Church a Latino Youth Program, as I'm looking at Chris, um, is going to be doing tamales in their parking lot. Ooh. So I need to add that to this map um, that I did provide to all of you. And we haven't submitted it yet because we haven't gotten approval of lifting that temporary ordinance. Um, but if we get permission, I'll go in the morning and fix it and then blast it out to the community through Facebook and on our website and likely in the Kaiser Times if I can weasel my way in there for something. Ignoring me. <laughs> I don't see him typing. I know. I already gave him the map. I already, I already hit, he goes, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so that's where I'm at with that. Okay. So um, we have the the map here, and the says that the street will close at 6 o'clock. The parade starts at 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock. <laughs> and there's going to be lights. There's going to be music. There's going to be all sorts of fun stuff. And last year, it was... Um, Raining, raining, raining. The parade started, and it was dry. It was just fantastic. I foresee the same this year. Just as long as it's dry during the parade, we're good. <laughs> so what's the makeup of the parade so far? What's the what? Makeup of the parade. How, How many, many people do we have registered so far? As of today, 40. Okay. Um, but I was just telling Dave a little bit ago, that's 10 more than we had last year at this time. Um, and I'm pretty confident we'll get to at least where we were, which was 73 entrants last year. I was hoping for 80, but talking to different folks who always say we want to do the parade are feeling very pressed with the time frame between Thanksgiving and then everything else we're doing this year during the holidays. And it's not just us. Uh, McNary Whitaker, excuse me, Whitaker Middle School um, is taking their choir performance that they normally do in the spring, and they're putting it in the first week of December this year. Mm. So... Um, I know of at least six different participants from last year that have children in that performance, and so they're feeling like, how am I going to build a float and do this? So it's awesome all the way around, but challenging. And what about bands? So we have one more band than we did last year. We have five bands signed up so far, and I have um, confirmation that three more are considering it cool. from out of town. So, so far we have um, McNary, South, Sprague, and McKay has a marching band this year, which is awesome for them. And then The Beat Ooh. Goes On, uh, which is a... <laughs> one-time around band. Yes, yeah, it used to be the one-time around band. Yeah. Yes. I don't know how to say it politically band. correct, but it's people who are older who still want to use their instruments, and they do a great job. Yep. Um, <laughs> Those 60-year-olds, Shannon. Older. Thanks. <laughs> I can't get away with saying that yet. Um, yeah, okay. <laughs> and then we have three out-of-town bands, two from the northern area, um, past Woodburn, and then one little east of us that are interested. And I'm not going to throw them under the bus in case they say not this year. But Float? Yeah. Huh? I'm not going to throw them under the float? No. Not yet. Never. <laughs> <laughs> Try to make it all ex exceptionally exciting. Um, there's a lot of logistics in town that day as well. McNary High School is... Um, sponsoring a youth basketball tournament all day on the 9th. <laughs> um, so we're, uh, I've, you know, working with Sergeant Wenning and logistics of traffic and trying to get people who are foreign to Kaiser in and out of Kaiser. I think this year for the parade overall, we've done a pretty good job of communicating in just about every source we possibly can when the road shuts down and how you can and cannot navigate in and out of the city. Um, you know, but people just have to really engage those resources, whether it's the paper, Facebook, the website. Um, I have 
a radio ad just about every second, it feels like, on KYKN talking about it. Um, so, you know, we're really trying to communicate to folks that this is, in fact, happening. And turns out if you're not at the parade, you're going to be hindered by it. <laughs> so just join us. <laughs> Don't we're fight it. Join it. Doing reader boards yeah. again this year? Dr. Okay, good. Fantastic. Thank you. Any questions? All right. Well, the beat will go on and uh, looking forward to the parade this year. And thank you to you and the ELF crew. And we had uh, a great crew this year. Yes. More than we needed. We're getting in the, the holiday swing a little early because they not only with the parade coming up, but all of the Christmas lights went up this Three weekend. Three ceremonies coming up. So we'd like to invite you officially to have you all come out and help us light the tree and then um, Madam Mayor, we have a special job for you, too. All right. I will do as directed to make sure we get the holidays you know, started, we're putting right? putting you on the spot. <laughs> Put the star on. Yeah. Oh, that would be a lot of fun. <laughs> like Tinker, Tinker be Bell. We can make that happen. Yeah. Yeah, me and Heights, just ask about that one. That'd be a lot of fun. Um, is it, that's Tuesday the 5th? Yeah. Okay. Six? I, no, it's the 5th. At six o'clock. At six o'clock, yeah. You all received an email in your inbox if your server is accepting emails from me today that has all the information provided. Perfect. I, I think they got said. that fixed. I think that's it. No. No, we're not done. <laughs> no, we still have to do that. Oh, we still got more stuff. Yeah. Okay. yeah but wait, there's more. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So then the next one is us asking. Um, I don't really even know what the words on this paper mean. So I'm here ultimately to say, will you waive the fees for? the permits for the parade and the Christmas tree lighting and the jingle dash, right? I think that's the three right. that we asked for. Oh, look at Nate. Okay. Yeah. Well, I have the applications here. Um, and we had talked about this at budget committee earlier this year, but then normally we just come here now. So here I am now. So the, um, in the staff report, we have the breakdown of the fees and so forth. And also, uh, if I remember correctly from the budget, um, I can go back to my page and look. But we will discuss this under this uh, item here in a few minutes okay. on each of the three of those. Okay. And um, I'm glad you're here to answer any questions if we have them um, when we're working through the process. Okay. So okay. if you can stick around, we'd yeah. be, able, be able to ask questions. So are we good with that? Then why don't we go ahead and do you have anything else uh, or we'll go into administrative action? One more. I have nothing else. You good? Do you have anything else? What did I forget? I'd just like to go on the record and say that Yenny and Schofield, the new orthodontics in town, stepped up right away and they're sponsoring the Christmas tree lighting this year. Really? And they want to be very involved in Kaiser. So if you know them, Great. thank them. Uh, I'm very grateful to any business that wants to step up and sponsor, but particularly new ones that come in and just want to swoop away and really get involved. It's pretty great. Well, they're in a wonderful location. We know a business that used to be there that was also very involved, uh, Big Town Hero. Right. So they're in that same location, and they have a front row seat for the parade. Perfect seat. It is. Perfect so seat. Well, we appreciate they're willing to become very involved in the community. That's how we roll in Kaiser is we work together and make things happen. Yeah. All right. Okay. Here we are. All right, thank you so much. We appreciate all of the work. We're looking forward to a very happy holiday season. Is there anyone else who would like to address the City Council during uh, public testimony before we move on to administrative action? Yes. Oh, you found the date. The date, yes. Okay. So this is an addendum. Um, the Salem City Club will feature Alan Pollock speaking on uh, the transportation package December 1st. That's December 11. 1st, yep. And that's a noon meeting at the Her Heritage Mall Mission Mill. Okay. And that's at Mission Mill. Yep. Okay. Fantastic. All. all right. Thank you so much. That takes us then to administrative action. Item 8A was just the resolution authorizing a temporary suspension of the ordinance prohibiting street vendors. City Manager. Thank you, Madam Mayor, and I'm going to Shannon. Thank you, Chris, Madam Mayor, and Council. As Danielle and Dave indicated, the Holiday Lights Parade is coming up again, and there's uh, three connected items uh, for your consideration in the packet. The first is uh, the suspension of the uh, street vendor ordinance. We've typically done that for years for the Iris Festival and, and the last few years for the Holiday Lights Parade. So that there's a resolution in there to do that, and all, it 
uh, prohibits any interference with pedestrian vehicular or parade traffic uh, to allow for uh, street vendors. The second is um, basically allowing pe permitted temporary uses in connection with the parade. And this is the one that Daniel was talking about, about uh, food vendors. Basically what this would do is allow a blanket of six, now seven, and, and the way I would suggest doing that, if I could switch to that, Madam Mayor, in the packet, is the second resolution has what I call the cover resolution and then the exhibit. And in the exhibit, it says council approves subject to the following hour, you know, hours and conditions as set forth. And number two says the following locations and has a list there. What I would propose instead is on the second line to change that to read the following locations as shown on the attached map, cross off those descriptions and, and indicate by amendment that we're adding St. Edwards. So the, the map, we'll get a, a revised map from Danielle. We'll, we'll just cross those off in the, in the text of it and just say as shown on the attached map. And that attached map will be like you see there except with the addition of the St. Edwards location. And that was in the staff report, the St. Edwards, it was... Yes, that report. was in the yeah. staff report. It just didn't get reappeared in the map. I think okay. Councillor Ryan had a question. Uh, question Ryan. Ryan. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Regarding that, that statement, I'm just wondering if, um, does it need to be specific in, in adding, for example, the, the seventh one? Because what happens if they get, they're able to get new additional people that want to support the parade between now and then? We don't want to come back. Can we, obviously, can we just kind of blanket well, that, I, I, so I don't know don't if Nate has anyone? a comment. I, Nate and I have discussed that. Uh, the issue becomes one that it's, I think, less than two weeks away. And, any, and I don't know if there would be any difficulty with it, but we, we felt that the council should approve kind of the general location and the number. Um, each of those is a $50, $55, 50 or $55 fee that the council would be waiving. And then, in addition, you know, we kind of have some concerns about any swapping at the last minute. But that's up to council. I don't know if, Nate, you have anything to add to that. The only concern that we have is what happens if somebody shows up and they're not working with the chamber and they haven't yeah. talked to us. They don't know what the conditions are that they have to approve. So at some point, somebody needs to talk to us. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> now, whether, whether you want to give uh, the the chamber some additional latitude I would the staff report suggests that they could establish some additional sites um, and as long as they're working through the chamber I, I'm not sure I would have a problem with that um, is but somebody I mean I, I don't want mayhem and pandemonium out there around the people <laughs> so in and I'm not certain if I may madam mayor Danielle do you anticipate any additional you haven't heard any discussion of additional or I don't know that there's going to be anybody additional but we're constantly recruiting and everything happens in Kaiser in two weeks <laughs> yeah that's, I well, mean, that's the reality is people go oh I can actually do this and so and the, the very worst that would happen if you adopted as way as proposed is any additional would have to come in and pay the $50 fifty dollar fee so I don't want any mistakes I mean anybody can do apply it's private property so there could be somebody that comes in that doesn't work through the chamber and apply also or somebody could come to the chamber and say gee I'm sorry I didn't get to you sooner and they could come in on their own and, and apply so that's really the only issue my goal was just not to tie their hands with hope that we can get more involvement and on the on the map so I'm right and and so as long as <clears throat> as long as council gives a, a, some sort of authorization to the chamber and they then the chamber assumes that responsibility to make sure they're not blocking aisles and and creating transportation issues and that sort of thing I I think that could be very workable for the council I just want it clear that council chamber can't block somebody that doesn't want to work with the chamber um, they still have access to come in get their own permit um, but if they want to work through the chamber I would think that would be a something easily accomplished sure. so and I, th I think the staff report indicates up to three additional sites um, the the staff report indicated one two three four plus up to three additional sites because that packet deadline right. we, we hadn't nailed them down so that would have been a total of seven which is what the total is now so it's up to council 
if, if you feel like you want to allow more wiggle room above the number of seven or, or, or shifting the location, uh, we can certainly write that in. And again, it, it's such a discrete time period. Um, you know, we're not, we're not talking about establishing a food cart for 16 weeks or something, or even two days. It's really during the, during the event. So I would think that council could easily give authority to the chamber um, to locate. If somebody came and they wanted to work with the chamber, that would be fine. Somebody that wanted to work independently would have to come to us. That's, that's my only concern. That works. Okay. okay. And if so, if I may, Madam Mayor, the, the second item, as I indicated, was the temporary, um, temporary uses, which is the second resolution there and the issue with the map. And then the, th the third one is the issue of the fees. And the fee waiver was discussed at the budget meeting, but the budget committee indicated that was up to council. The costs for the police and public works staffing and barricades have been budgeted. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, that's up to, up to council on, on the waiver of that fee. So uh, in, in kind of reiterating that, we have three issues. One, the suspension of the ordinance for street vendors. Two, the temporary uses subject conditions for the holiday light parade. And that, that is the one that Councilor Ryan spoke to, you'd want to say, as amended with regard to the addition of St. Edwards in the map or any other changes that council may want to make to that. And then thirdly, a minute motion with regard to the fees. And you can see, I won't go through the dollar amounts there, but you can see the, the estimated fees there. And, and um, so the, the motion would be if the council wants to waive all or part or none of those. Okay. Any questions uh, on the staff report? Councilor Ryan? You're gonna divide it then? We're gonna take one this in, in bites. We're not gonna try to do the elephant all in one. Uh, Mr. Brown. Um, so perhaps um, Danielle could speak to, well, I'll speak since she's sitting down. Um, I, I heard at the um, government affairs meeting that the intent was not to limit people working with the chamber just to chamber members that want to locate these things, um, the food carts. What? Okay. They don't, have to be, they don't have to be chamber members so, in order to participate. That is, yeah. That's okay. what I heard. That you do not have to be a chamber member. So there's so, no charge for them to participate um, on top of, aside from or in addition to the temporary use permit. Right. Okay. So that's all we're dealing with here. So it truly is a community-oriented event. It, it is something that the chamber is is um, going through, the all the work to establish it and to organize it, um, and it is open truly to all community members. And I think they're making a very good faith effort to make sure that it is open and it's not a membership only kind of thing, but it's a community, a community involvement effort. Councilor Reed. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I'm just, uh, as I'm looking at these estimates and so forth, I, basically what I'm seeing is about $615 that have not been budgeted. So this would be waivers 615 roughly that we hadn't counted on. Um, I guess my question is for um, Mr. Wood here. Where would that money come from and can we afford it? At, at this point, we do have um, available working capital to cover the costs that we haven't budgeted for already. So if I, and just to reiterate, the things that were already budgeted through the budget process were the police staffing, Public Works barricades and the Public Works staffing, is that correct? That is correct. Okay, those three were already accounted for and approved by the Budget Committee. Yes. Okay. Any other questions? <coughs> uh, Council President Parsons, you want to put a motion on the table for the first item? Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I move that the Kaiser City Council adopt Resolution R 2017, authorizing a temporary suspension of the ordinance prohibiting street vendors. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Kaiser City Council adopt resolution R-2017 authorizing a temporary suspension of the ordinance prohibiting street vendors. Discussion. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. <coughs> Motion passes unanimously. Item 8B is the, uh, sorry, the second part of this one. Um, 
is the resolution authorizing temporary uses subject to conditions for Kaiser Holiday Light Parade 2017. Do you want to go ahead and put a motion on the table? Let me just go with it. Okay. Um, yes. Yeah, so, and then the, with the changes, um, as shown on the attached map, is that where we put? Um, well, if just to reiterate for council, the the motion could be as amended. Amended meaning change the reference to instead of the the attachments in there instead of the list just as shown in the attached map and the attached map would be identical to the one that was handed out except with the addition of St. Edwards. So you don't amended. you don't need to say all that for the motion if you agree with the way that's reiterated it's it's as amended and and just for council's sake with a resolution we tend to we can be a, a little bit looser on the exact language depending on the issue with an ordinance we cannot so i just want you to understand that for future reference so the indication again was um if i have the right one here is to change paragraph two in exhibit a to read the 2017 kaiser holiday light parade may have one booth slash stand located in the following in the excuse me in the locations as shown on the attached map on a parking lot or other hard surface area uh, and then cross off that list attach the map mm -hmm. with the addition to st edwards are there any any questions on that amendment no okay. just, so just and then uh the, the question was um uh, council ryan maybe a friendly amendment to with well, that amendment to include if there are more vendors that would be inclusive and that may be up to 10 or if you want to put a number on it or so that they're not limited at seven if people come in late and that still could be a supportive it's, it's just so long as they work with the chamber sure absolutely right. and, and so that would be an amendment to say up to a three additional right because right now it says that's up okay to three other locations we can say up to six other locations um referencing exhibit it it'd actually be up to three additional Two, There's already three, seven. Four, five, six, seven. Eight, and and I believe yeah. the indication was three ten. up to ten, so it'd be a three additional. Right. Okay. Yeah. So it still has a. So for a total of ten. Mm -hmm. Up to ten. Yeah. So, in case it stays at seven, we're, it's still the same. Right. Yeah. It'd be as amended. Um, amendment. Understanding that the uh, the total is not seven but ten. And was there a motion in a second? No, we haven't done a motion in a second. Yeah. She's still working on the language. Okay. <laughs> One more question, Tim. I'm sorry, where did you say that money would come from again? Uh, the funds would come from the existing working capital. Um, in all of our funds, we came out a little bit ahead over what we anticipated last year. Awesome, thank you. Okay, I'm ready. Okay, go. Okay, Madam Mayor, I move that the Kaiser City Council adopt resolution R 2017 authorizing the temporary uses subject to conditions for Kaiser Holiday Light Parade as amended, understanding uh, that it could not be seven but up to ten vendors. Okay. And we pay all fees. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Kaiser City Council adopt resolution R 2017 authorizing the temporary, temporary uses subject to conditions for Kaiser Holiday Lights Parade 2017 as amended to, uh, to t up to 10 for the locations and that all fees waived? All fees waived. And all fees waived. Uh, Councilor Ryan. Thank you. When you say all fees, you're referring to the um, temporary use permit fees, correctly? Yes. You're correct, um, you're not going into the? No. That's just, a separate, um, okay, thank you. Um, no, no, all no. fees waived are all these fees right here, all of them. Um, Madam. Well, we're on, I thought we're doing it, we're doing it three separate, I thought. Right. Um, are we splitting? We have to oh. split that one out, don't we? It, yes, we Madam Mayor. The, the okay. step okay. report indicates the resolution stands separate from the fee waiver, which is just a minute motion. Okay. Right. Okay. All so right. we're Sorry. not discussing the fee. We're not discussing this time. the fee then. Okay. Okay. So the resolution is for the temporary use subject to um, conditions, and we're raising the number to 10. 10 That's correct. For um, the vendors to work with uh, the chamber, understanding that if V vendors or uh, businesses on River Road want to um, have things going on that they can do so as part of uh, their own business. Okay, any further discussion on this one? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Now we can deal with the fees and that would be a minute motion. Uh, Council President Parsons. 
Thank you, Madam Mayor. I move that the Kaiser City Council uh, waive all fees uh, for the Kaiser Holiday Lights Parade. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Kaiser City Council waive all fees for the Holiday Lights Parade. Discussion. Council Ryan. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I struggle with this a little bit, and we've had this discussion before. I, I guess I want to maybe look at making a friendly amendment. Um, one, I think it supports Kaiser, and it's a, it is all about Kaiser, um, and I love what it does. But I'm concerned with the fact that we increase the fees for police to our residents, and and because I feel like we need to be good stewards of that money, I'm I would like to propose that, and it's I guess because it's sponsored, because it's uh, it is not a nonprofit, it's a, it's for profit, that we remove the police staffing at 4,400 <coughs> to um, to cover all of the fees at 2,565 with the exception of the police. And again, that's only because we are um, increasing our residents and I feel like it's fiscally responsible, so. So that's a friendly amendment. Does, is, does the mover accept it? No. Okay, did you want to make that as a separate motion? No, it's fine. Okay. i just like it on the record, so. Okay. Thank you. And uh, just just to note that the police staffing amount was budgeted, budgeted. by the budget committee and, and that's at the, the council back in May. So this, Right. Mm -hmm. The uh, police staffing, the public works staffing, and the public works barricade. So the change we're making tonight is regarding the application fee of $50, the temporary use permits. It says seven at $55 each, and this could be up to 10 at $55 each. And then the Kaiser 23 coverage, and that would come out of the PEG funds, the public, public educational government uh, television fund, which is a separate uh, from the general fund. And Tim's nodding, so I got that one right. And that's at $180, $4, um, four hours at $45 per hour. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. I love a parade. Let's do it. Done. All right. That takes us now to the consent calendar. Council President Parsons. Thank you, Madam Mayor. We have two items on the consent calendar. Uh, item A is a resolution authorizing the city manager to enter into an intergovernmental agreement with the state of Oregon for vending services. And B is the approval of the November 6, 2017 regular session minutes. Do we have any polls? Council President Parsons. I move approval of the consent calendar. Second. <coughs> the consent calendar has been moved and seconded. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Uh, reports. So, Councillor Ryan, shall we start with you tonight? Sure. I'm short and sweet tonight. I have uh, have had a busy couple of weeks, but it's um, uh, let's see. Let's start with. Um, I was one of. Uh, I think with Bruce, we gave the presentation to Eagle Charter School for who's the boss, and it reminds me of when my boys were little because they were. Crazy little great critters. <laughs> <laughs> they were all over the place. We had fun though. I think we had fun. Um, well, before you go on, um, I don't. I want everybody to see this. This is a card that the students sent to uh, thank Councillor Anderson and Councillor Ryan for doing this. I don't know if you can get there. We go. And each of the uh, little petals on here has the name of a student. Oh. So uh, this was in the council office. So thank you both for doing this. The students really had a great time. It was a lot of fun. It was my privilege. Uh, secondly, uh, our United Way meeting got canceled today, and it's on now. Um, our next meeting won't be till January, so I won't have a report on that. But I know we're still working on trying to get a fundraising mechanism for the kids. Uh, with Pure Court. And then I um, filled in for Council Herrera for the Parks Commission and, and was thoroughly entertained and happy to support the parks. So, and that's all I have. Very good. Thank you very much. Councilor Freeman. Uh, let's see. Uh, Councilor Reed and I had attended the Marion County Recycling Tour. Um, it was very interesting. It happened to be a very cold night standing outside. So, um, I don't know, pick a, a warmer night to do that tour, I guess. Definitely, <laughs> though. Yeah, <laughs> probably. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it was interesting. We got a nice little goodie bag, and um, they fed everyone dinner. Um, I did attend the planning commission uh, for uh, President Parsons. And um, Kyle, you didn't mention this, but it was probably the shortest meeting of a long time for the planning commission. It was 50 minutes. So um, 
I'll cover those anytime they're 50 minutes, right? <laughs> um, and then uh, we have the Traffic Bikeways Pedestrian uh, Safety Committee. They um, are very active. They've got some bike routes on the website. Um, and they're routes for all ages. They're doing walking routes as well. Uh, Wayne Fry has really been uh, working with uh, Safe Routes to School and Google Maps. Um, Dennis Dunning was one of the um, committee members, and his term is done. And so we thank him. And he was talking about all his traveling that he's going to be doing. So the rest of the committee was very envious. <laughs> and we do have uh, between 70 and 90 helmets available. So these do have to be fitted by a volunteer. And the, um, there are several uh, committee members on the traffic safety that will fit the helmets. And Deputy Chief Coons, if Please let the officers know that there are helmets if you guys need them. And several of them will come to the police station or even they'll make a house call if needed. But so we have helmets there. Um, are you going to report on the grants that uh, Officer Winning's been? No? Okay. So I'll share that. That. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't want to steal it if you were, um, but also uh, Officer Winning uh, reported that, that we have, were successful with our DUI grant, a speed grant, and a seatbelt grant, and he has applied for all three of those again and feels pretty confident that we'll get those again, so that's great. Um, we talked earlier about the tree lighting on the 5th and the parade on the 9th. There will be no traffic meeting in December and no West Kaiser Neighborhood Association meeting in December. Um, I attended the Personnel Policy Committee meeting, and I want to thank Councillor Reed for covering the Volunteer Coordinating Committee for me. And we still have a couple um, openings, which I know will be posted and closing. First of December. Okay, and so we do have one opening on the Parks Board, one for the Points of Interest, one on Traffic Safety Bikeways Pedestrian, and one on Stormwater. So I know it was a big uh, meeting last week, and so thank you. That's all I have. All right, thank you very much. <laughs> Councillor Reed. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I was fascinated by the waste management tour. It's, it's always amazing to me what goes on behind the scenes, stuff that we don't have to think about, they do very well. And it's a very well-organized um, establishment. And a uh, big thank you to them for all that they do. Um, I w attended the Kaiser Community Band Veterans Concert, and that was full of all kinds of wonderful patriotic music. It was, it was really an excellent uh, experience, and so. Uh, we have a lot of those guys uh, and gals take, putting a lot of work in that, and uh, it was a lot of fun. I also went to go see both Wizard of Oz, which was at McNary, and Heaven Can Wait, which was Kaiser Homegrown Theater, both uh, fantastic productions, and uh, again, a lot of hard work, a lot of talent. We have such a wonderful community that way. Uh, there was a, a bond community, uh, sorry, a bond community listening forum at McNary High School last Monday and Councillor Herrera and I were there, and uh, I was really impressed with the turnout. Apparently in the district, that's been the highest turnout of any um, feeder system. So we really appreciate our Kaiser residents who went there to, to get educated about this bond that is coming up on the uh, May ballot. So it's important to be able to know what is involved with that and to educate yourself on that. And there is a link on the Salem Kaiser webpage to find out more about that and what, what that has to offer. Uh, volunteer committee was lots of fun, lots of, again, very dedicated people. Uh, we had a Southeast Kaiser Neighborhood Association meeting last Friday, and there is going to be a meeting change on that. We are going to be meeting the first Thursday of every month now, and that will start January 4th. There will be no December meeting for that. So, again, hopefully, we're hoping with that meeting change that we can get a lot more people out, that it will be more successful, or it, it will be more of a draw, and it will be here at the Civic Center, and those will be at 6.30. So um, invite all our Southeast Kaiser neighborhood folks to attend that. Also, uh, we've got one more day of student uh, teacher conferences, so please come to that. Uh, they're, they're lots of fun for, for most parents. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, again, a really excellent way to support the community in terms of the school. So that's all I got. All right, thank you very much. Um, on the note of Heaven Can Wait, uh, I'd like to congratulate former Mayor Dennis Coho on his acting uh, <laughs> at, in that production, and it looked like he had a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Two lines.
Council President Parsons. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I attended the Marion County Commissioner's Breakfast on the 9th um, with Councilors Ryan and Freeman. That's always an interesting conversation and learning about what's going on other, and outside of Kaiser in the county. Um, they're always interested in what we do here in Kaiser and they love the roundabout, by the way. Um, especially Brentano. Yes, especially San Brentano, that's correct. <laughs> and, then, and then I attended the personal policy meeting um, last Thursday. Um, also on Saturday, McNary had a, um, the booster had a fair, a uh, craft fair, and it was like so packed full of people and vendors, it was pretty amazing. I bought quite a bit of stuff. I seem to always spend a lot of money at those things, but I had a great time, so um, it, it was a great job by whomever did that for the boosters. Um, coming up. <laughs> Danielle's got a big smile. Oh, she has a big smile. I have a great group of gals. <laughs> um, teamwork. Teamwork, teamwork. Um, and coming up, uh, Thanksgiving and some time off. So that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councilor Ferreira. Uh, thank you. We, um, uh, see, so go back to Veterans Day. I had the honor of uh, taking a young veteran to uh, dinner, a personal friend of mine. And uh, we had a visit with uh, four other elderly gentlemen from World War II that are still around in Woodburn. Wow. Uh, on November 13th, we had the, um, and I want to thank uh, Councilor Ryan for filling in for me. I uh, was, didn't work out, but it, I'm glad I, I, I did go to the, um, uh, let, me, let, me, let me see if I get this right, Marion County Public Safety Coordinating Commission, and now the Criminal Justice Advisory Council. We kind of have a dual role now, uh, where we toured McLaren. And um, wow. it was very interesting for me because my father actually worked there in 1968, and I had to go back, and it was weird because when they introduced me, I said I was here in 1968, and of course they all <laughs> misinterpreted that. <laughs> but we used to go to the movies, uh, they had a swimming pool there, and, uh, and it was kind of cool going back to when I was in sixth grade, going, you know, going to there as a family. Um, it was really cool. Uh, but that was an incredible tour. And by if you ever if you ever get an opportunity to take that tour, it, it is amazing to see the the, you know, the coordination there. And I want to thank Superintendent uh, Dan Berger, who I've known since high school, and Lord High School President. That's the name of the high school at McLaren. Uh, Michael Kahn, I think. He used to work for the school district. A well-known, very incredible uh, tour, and we appreciate that. Uh, our Cal Club in Kennedy is underway, and we are really excited about our volunteers. We have volunteers from McNary, uh, Corner Community, Cornerstone Church, I believe, and uh, and just other members of the community. And I, I'm really impressed with the, the dedication of our high school kids. It's just amazing, and I keep telling them that. Uh, also, uh, let's see, oh, yeah, community dinner uh, at, at uh, my church, St. Edwards, this Wednesday. So everybody's invited, and if you've never been there, just go down there. They always, everybody's really friendly, and you just meet people, and you usually you'll see somebody you know. I guarantee you, I always do. Uh, and on December, let's see, what's the last? Oh yeah, the last thing I wanted to do is, is, is give you uh, some kudos to uh, Officer Coons over here, because uh, whenever I need information and I go to Coons, uh, he does a wonderful job of getting back and, and letting us know what's going on, keeping keeping us in tune, and I uh, I really appreciate that. Young no, man, so we go back a long ways, uh, our little league days. Back, you know, I tell people 40 pounds ago. <laughs> Thank you. Roland, Roland, you. Councilor Herrera, go Beavers. <laughs> I, I get a whiff of civil war going on here. <laughs> Quick. Yeah, 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 he came with the flags and everything. That's awesome. Councilor Anderson. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, before I begin, a uh, question uh, around the community dinner, and maybe Councilor Herrera can answer this. If you, we have anybody who might be interested in helping serve or something like that, is that something that you all have that taken care of, or would they show up, or? I'll be honest with you. Our, the the, the um, Latter-day Saints uh, Church, is that the correct way to say it? I think they usually do the bulk oh, of it. Are they? And okay. they have, I mean, it's amazing. They have. Volunteers, we, and they have too many volunteers sometimes. And it's, okay. a, it's great that you ask because I always ask them, uh, not for my kids, of course, to help. Groups. And, and they and, do and, share and that. They're, they're really, they're really, I mean, you can always ask, but they really do a good job. Okay. Yeah, they, they, they take turns. Different organizations different take turns. So they they so. carry the book. I mean, I think yeah. they've done it four times this year. It's amazing. <laughs> so I, I, I had a question from a member of my household about that. Oh, well, so, that's anyway. good for you. Well, yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll, my, I'll see what I can do. My, my daughter, at, who's a senior at high school. Um, all right, so a few things. Uh, first, I want to uh, just uh, extend my appreciation to Councillor uh, Ryan for uh, taking my place at the County Commissioner breakfast uh, meeting on the 9th that I had to miss for another um, meeting I had to be at, so I appreciate that. Uh, 
uh, let's see, day before that, actually, uh, November 8th, I was as the uh, liaison to the uh, Kaiser Chamber Board. I was at that meeting. Um, and I just uh, continue to just uh, uh, be so appreciative of the uh, awesome work that the chamber, the board, and the other members of, these, of the organization do to really make things happen. And they've got things underway. We've already heard about all of the event planning that they've got underway just for right now, not, not to mention Iris Festival and everything else like that. But uh, uh, so that's really awesome. And it's making, really does, it lends so much to this community um, in so many ways. Uh, and so I'm, I'm also looking very much forward to tree lighting on December 5th at uh, Wallery Plaza, 6 p.m. So don't make sure you're there. Um, but uh, just one other thing I want to uh, uh, do a shout out to, and that is uh, the Kaiser Network of Women. No. How about them apples? Um, they are they are getting their giving baskets uh, together, and um, so if folks uh, want to help out on those, that's a really neat uh, project that uh, I really appreciate. The folks at the chamber, business women and men, coming together to uh, help provide for the needs of our community for those that are less fortunate um, and that need that help at this time of the year, especially. Um, then, of course. Uh, the 9th of December, we already heard, uh, but uh, just to reiterate, reiter uh, we've got the Jingle Dash Run Walk that will precede the uh, parade, um, and that's a 6 p.m. start on the on the Run Walk, uh, start and finish at JC's Pizzeria, and then the Holiday Lights Parade, of course, at a 7 p.m. start. Um, that'll be great. For more info on that, you can go to kaiserchamber.com uh, for all the info on that. Uh, and, uh, oh, and then the other thing I just wanted to point out on that, back on No uh, uh, Kaiser Network of Women, uh, you can go to their Facebook page for more information if you want to help out um, with that. And then finally, just the one uh, thing that I've got to, because somebody brought up Civil War, and yes, I am a beaver, so go beeves. Um, but, um, <laughs> um, and that is uh, the, the thing that I would just highlight is the, uh, the, the neat thing that our Boys and Girls Club uh, for Marion Polk Counties in Salem does. Um, that was last uh, Thursday, uh, Civil War dinner auction. Um, I don't know how much money they raised, but uh, it's always a cool thing. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> um, but always an awesome event. It was like over 600 people there. And I might point out that the McNary Band did play both fight songs. So there you go, <laughs> Councilor Herrera. Uh, I, but uh, in any event, a great event. And uh, just so, just uh, an awesome, awesome organization. So anyway, happy Thanksgiving to all. All right, thank you very much. Uh, just a couple of things to add to so much going on in our community. Uh, I did go to the SEDCOR, which is Strategic Economic Development Corporation presentation on the op opioid epidemic. They had uh, three panelists, uh, physician, mental health uh, services person, and um, the WDA, uh, Paige Clarkson, who did a fantastic job discussing uh, the complexities and the, uh, the progress we're making in terms of opioids coming together as a community and providing appropriate and effective care for people who are in crisis. So I was very appreciative of that. Um, and we need to really stay uh, well informed and ahead of that. Um, one of the outreaches that our police department did was the drug take back, the prescription drug take back. And anybody who didn't bring down prescription drugs they want out of the house, um, Please bring them down to the Kaiser Police Station any business day, Monday through Friday. We have a take-back station right here that's always available. So when you're done with prescriptions, get them out of the house and keep them out of the hands of people who shouldn't or shouldn't have access to them. Um, on the 14th, I attended the Heritage Foundation Board of Directors. We have another meeting coming up on the 12th of December. A lot of good things happening at the Heritage with the Kaiser uh, Heritage Christmas is coming up in December. And we also have activities, at, as you heard, at the library. The Black, White, and Gray show is still um, on over at the uh, art gallery there. Phenomenal, phenomenal artwork. If you haven't been over there, please make a point of going over and seeing that art show. It is just incredible. Uh, 15th was the Personnel Policies Committee. Uh, lots of great things happening with the recruitments uh, for our police. 
and with the parks employees and uh, some great work there. So some new folks get to join our wonderful staff here at the city. Coming up, we've got, um, there's a holiday event calendar on our website, thanks to the Festival Advisory Board, who had their round table, I believe it was in October, wasn't it, or September? Uh, so organizations, groups that were doing community events were invited uh, once again to come share what they're doing so folks know who's doing what and when so we can better coordinate. And we have put a calendar on the website. And if your event didn't get on there, please let us know and we can get it added on the list. Um, I did reschedule my coffee with Kathy. So uh, if you thought it was last Saturday and you missed it, well, you didn't. Um, I had an event to attend with my husband at the West Valley Fire District, so it has been rescheduled for this Saturday. Take a break from your shopping for a little bit and then go back out to our small businesses. Um, I'll be at McNary Restaurant on the 25th from 10 to noon. So come on out, let's have some coffee and conversation, and then let's support our businesses. Um, next week at the end of the week, I will be... Um, at the League of Oregon Cities Board of Directors where we will begin work with our new uh, executive director, Mike Cully. And then on the second, I hope you all have on your calendar, I think most of you are able to come to council night at the Food Barrel uh, over at Gubster Miracle of Christmas. So that's from six to eight. Um, and then look on the map on where the, I think the collection point is the same place. Six to eight on December 2nd. So those of you who can make it, it's always a lot of fun and that's also um, snowball night, so later in the evening, if you're on the second shift there, you can see all these kids coming by and all their beautiful uh, tuxes and gowns uh, taking the lights as part of their um, evening for snowball. And then I just want to uh, give a shout out to our Kaiser Police, who have worked very closely with neighbors of the Country Glen neighborhood, who woke up to a very uh, disturbing uh, site a, a few days ago with threats that were painted on homes and fences against um, students at McKay High School. And I wrote on my Facebook page and I want to reiterate as we all uh, are in full agreement that there is never any time that any threat of, to anyone is acceptable in our community. We will not tolerate it. We will work hard to make sure that our students and our neighbors are safe and feel secure. And I want to give a big shout out to our police working in conjunction with Mary County Sheriff's, with the school district, and the city of Salem to ensure that our students are kept safe and that they know they are well taken care of. So thank you uh, to Deputy Chief Coons and everyone who was involved with that. And uh, for following up the next day as people are uh, rightfully so uh, concerned that there are people out there who have ill intention, but we will not tolerate that. This community welcomes all, all of our neighbors are part of our community, and that's just the way we, we roll here. So thank you, Deputy Chief, and please pass on our thanks to everyone in the department. And please keep us up to date as things unfold so uh, we'll know what's going on there. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to the city manager for other business. Oh, I'm sorry. I think you've got some pretty exciting news to share. Our youth counselor, Hernandez. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I do have some exciting news. I have been invited to um, full back background. I applied to the Gates Scholarship. It's one of the most competitive uh, scholarships in the country. Uh, for those who don't know, it basically, it, it's changed since uh, it used to be the Gates Millennial Scholarship. Uh, Bill and Melinda Gates uh, donate a billion dollars grant to this program to help underrepresented uh, students uh, be able to afford college. So it basically pays, it's like a full ride for undergraduates. Um, so I applied to that and I was invited to um, the second phase. Um, so it cuts from about 50,000 or whoever uh, applies across the country to just 2,000 people. So I'll read this. Uh, excerpt from the email that I got. As a semi-finalist, you are one of 2,000 applicants from across the country who have exhibited exceptional potential to succeed in college and beyond. As such, we encourage you to fully research your college options and to apply to schools that are strong academic matches, which may include the most selective institutions in the country. So that was a good piece of news for me. Thank you. 
so it's not over yet. I have to write like four essays, get uh, recommendations, and um, then there's another cut from the 2000s to say about 1,000. After that, it's an interview process. In the end, there's only 300 finalists. So uh, getting into the 2000 mark is exciting, though. That is fantastic. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, McNary High School is on Thanksgiving break for this entire week. So during that, I'll be spending mine uh, filling out college applications, uh, the <laughs> scholarships, <laughs> writing some essays, <laughs> um, and studying for the December SAT to get that last uh, chance of bumping up my test scores and making me more competitive for colleges and whatnot. Um, Future Business Leaders of America is trying to reach out uh, and get itself known in the community. So we will be having a float during the Holiday Lights Parade, so that's exciting. Um, and we're seeking partnerships with local businesses to secure internships and job shadows for our interested students to um, start building towards their future career goals. Fantastic. Um, I'm a chair member for uh, the Community Outreach Committee for National Honor Society at McNary High School. Um, so we're looking for opportunities for us, for uh, McNary students to serve our community and any volunteering opportunities possible. So you can reach out to me, um, let me know. And there's also uh, the Adopt-A-Celt adult, adopt program at McNary High School, and it's an opportunity for um, people to give to families who can't afford to provide gifts and whatnot for the holidays for their kids. So it's a really good opportunity to, for us to pitch in and support a family in our community. So you can see the counseling office for more information on that. And that's all I have. Thank you. All right. Awesome. Thank you very much. And congratulations. We are so excited for you and very proud of you. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to turn it over to the city manager for other business. This time is provided to allow the mayor, city council members, or staff an opportunity to bring new or old matters before the council that are not on tonight's agenda. City manager. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Tracy is signaling nothing. I have nothing. Tim. Nothing here. Deputy Chief Officer Coons. Yeah, thank Sorry. you, Chris, Madam Mayor, City Councilors. I had nothing tonight except for to say thank you for your thank yous. I do take those back to the members of the police department and share your appreciation for them. And so thank you very much. Mr. Lark. Nothing tonight, thank you. Mr. Brown. Hmm? Actually, a couple of things. Uh, it centers around the date that we have for the consultants doing the interviews. And um, so we're basically going to be starting either at 11 o'clock and going through till 645 or starting at 12 and going through. Um, we want to make sure that we are reaching out to our Hispanic community. And so one of the groups is going to be targeted to our, our Hispanic um, uh, members of our community. So um, and we're working on the details uh, with Councillor Herrera there. Um, and I need to get with the chamber. Uh, one of the groups is specifically oriented to our business community. And so um, I, need, I need to get with you about some names. The time, the, the difficulty is so that we, we have a total of, I think, nine, nine groups. And so we have to coordinate them on a very tight time frame. They're, we're allotting 45 minutes. The intent is they're very small groups. They're intended to have a very personal discussion. It's focused on um, setting the context in our community for what the community um, attitude is about the, uh, about the urban growth boundary issues and what kind of impacts, what is our tolerance for changes to our community by changing that. And um, so it's all focused on that, that specific topic. Um, and there, it's not going to be so much an interview as it is a discussion, and our consultants are going to be leading that discussion. So um, though it's very discreet and it's only 45 minutes, it's really very important to set that context for our consultants. Um, so Danielle, if I can get with you um, tomorrow, that would be good. <laughs> or somebody, you just tell me who, I don't care. <laughs> Well, I, and perhaps I could work with Jonathan on it. Yes, that would be great. <laughs> okay. I'm sure he's watching right now, appreciating this. <laughs> I'll tell him you said so. Okay. All right. Um, on the record now. So, and um, Kim, I might.
talk with you a little bit because as I'm looking at the, the numbers. So we're meeting with the neighborhood associations. We're meeting with the builders and developers. Uh, we're meeting with the planning commission. We have a group uh, from our service organizations, the Rotary members there. We have you as council members, our small groups, because I can't have more than three of you in a room at one time. So, um, and that's why I'm trying to shuffle you guys around that. So there's actually um, two of you will be meeting with the neighborhood associations and uh, then we'll have two other times where you'll be talking with the consultants one-on-one. -on -one. Um, then we have a group that's citizens at large. And remember, these groups are just from four to six people. So they're very, it's intended that the consultants want to hear from the individuals. It's not a large group that some people are going to be talking a lot and some people are just going to be listening. Um, everybody's going to be uh, participating in this and directly. So um, that um, is enough to chew on for now. It's quite enough from you. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Johnson. Nothing tonight, thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you very much. I have no <coughs> written communications tonight. Agenda input, December 4th, 2017, 7 p.m. will be City Council in regular session. December 11th, we have work session at 545. We, no lot, we don't have a topic at this time. We'll leave it on the record for right now. Uh, something comes up between now and then, but I'm not anticipating um, anything at this time. I know there are some topics we want to take on probably early in the year, but uh, middle of December is often not a good time for that. <coughs> December 18th, we will again meet in regular session at 7 p.m. Is there anything else yes. for the good of the order? Uh, Councilor Herrera. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I forgot to mention uh, all our sports teams do a great job, our soccer team. Uh, I just want to acknowledge McNary's football team, Coach uh, Avenon did a great job with the, the group this year. They won their first round against Grants Pass, and then they had to go face West Lynn, number third <laughs> ranked, and that was uh, not very pretty, but you know what? They, uh, they were young, and they're going to be uh, just fine, but I wanted to just congratulate them on a great season, and uh, the kids are really enthused for next year, so thank you for that. Thank you. Appreciate I really appreciate that. that. Everybody have a happy Thanksgiving. Oh, Councilor Ryan? Sorry. Thank you, yes. Madam Mayor. Real quick. Um, I wanted to mention that um, Small Business Saturday we talked about, I know briefly, but McNary Golf Course, who is such a great member of our community and giving back, is donating um, a portion of their gift certificates to CASA, which is our court-appointed um, special advocates program. And you know, they're here in Kaiser. So you're supporting a local nonprofit and profit and supporting McNary. If you can purchase a gift certificate from them, you can get them from them or even from me. So thank you so much. All right, thank you very much. Happy Thanksgiving. We are adjourned. It is 820.